guys, check this out. I made this with a resin printer. Now we finally have a plate on a resin printer that's big enough to do even seven inch or seven and a half inch style frames. And it's completely solid. So it is different than a standard 3D print. And it has a little bit different process, which I'm gonna show you in this review. Uh, I have a Hay Gears Reflex RS right here. But aside from the cost of the machine, this is a completely different process. Printing this solid FPV drone frame versus the threaded style layered 3D print, which over time, in my experiences with 10 years worth of 3D printing on this channel and doing DIY drones, I've printed a lot of frames. Now, the difference, the big difference is the separation of layers that you can get when you're printing with a standard style 3D printer. You have layer separation with a lot of motor vibration. Uh, I've had this a lot when I 3D print mounts for motors, things like that for uh, FPV wings. I've had them fray and come apart with high RPM. So you have to watch out for that. Now, if you're doing something like a five inch, this would be a better choice for something like a five inch bando basher. Um, the prints are fairly easy to set up. And instead of having like a spool of filament like this, it can get jammed up in the lines and cause chaos. Uh, usually I'm having to retune my 3D printers with filament. Those types of 3D printers, about every, uh, seems like every two to three weeks, I'm having to re-level, recalibrate, and do all that stuff. Now, there are other printers out there that have less maintenance, but even the best ones out there have a, a standard amount of maintenance to them. So if you have a 3D printer, you already know what I'm talking about. But with the resin printer, it's less maintenance, but more care of how you're doing your prints and the liquid, the resin that you're dealing with is different than, say, uh, a solid piece of filament spool. And the big difference is the mess. The mess involved with a resin printer does come in these little uh, canisters right here that you can take the top off of, slides right down into the top of this frame, and it has this UV cover on the front of it right here, which blocks sunlight. Uh, you should put it somewhere in your house where it's uh, fairly dark, say, in the garage or somewhere, but also moderately temperature controlled, say around 70 to 75 degrees. Now this blocks the sunlight from coming in there and curing the resin. So as this sits out in the sun, it will cure. Uh, even if you had some residue left over in a container where you washed off your parts individually in some fresh water, you can take that outside, set it in the sun, and the sun will actually cure the residue that's in the water. And then you can dispose of the solid waste in the trash can. Uh, it's it's kind of crazy. So it is very uh, susceptible to sunlight, and it will cure with with some sunlight. So uh, that that's also a difference. Sunlight actually won't make it weaker; it'll make it stronger. Uh, versus like PLA, which gets damaged in the sunlight. So as this one's sitting in the sunlight, it's just getting more cured all the time. Now there is a washer that you can get along with it. You put these buckets on the washer. You can do it for. 5, 10, 15 minutes at a time, and you put your parts in there individually, it shakes, rinses all the resin off of the part. Once it does that, a lot of the resin settles to the bottom. Have it drain into and out of the first container down into the bottom of the new container. And then you can take your part out, and you can rinse it off in some fresh water in another container, and you slap it into the curing machine. Now, this is where it gets really cool because as that machine goes round and round and round, it has a ultraviolet light, which cures it. It's kind of like, imagine it as like a mini microwave for your 3D printed parts. Uh, it is very cool because again, like uh, it feels to me, the print itself feels more rigid. So it does have a little bit of flex to it, but it is a more solid feeling FPV frame than what I've had before with my uh, standard filament style 3D printers. So if you're looking for something that will uh, just give you kind of a, a better looking print, it will do mini figurines like people that are into D&D, or if you wanna make figurines and, and paint them, that's what a lot of these guys are using for, uh, for their gaming purposes. So very high details, but also when you're not even really needing the details, uh, say for an FPV frame, if you want to go that route and sort of get into doing true DIY FPV drone building, uh, aside from buying, you know, something like a bind and fly, 
which we do a lot of reviews for those on this channel. Now, the first print that I did with this printer was this smaller unibody frame right here for a 20 by 20, a uh, little two inch brushless frame. And this frame right here was my first impression of this printer. Now, as it came out of the liquid, it's a very interesting process because once you get a print set up, you're gonna use the software that comes along with it. I'll put a link down below in the video description. You open up an STL file off of, say, a free thingiverse.com or something like that, and all the parts load up. You can do them individually on the plate. The plate is wide enough, again, for like a seven to seven and a half inch drone frame. And once you slice it, it's pretty much the same type of process that you go through. If you've ever done a slicer, uh, say Cura or something like that, standard style 3D printer, this is basically the same thing. And once it slices, it can send it over Wi-Fi straight to the printer, and then you can start the print process. It does take about five to 10 minutes to heat up the resin. You can also get a heated resin tray, which is sort of an add-on that I do suggest that's also powered through the printer and also has a separate cable that comes and powers uh, the resin tray. So very cool that it heats the resin up. So if you have, say, your resin printer in your garage and it's a little bit colder in the winter, you can plug that in and it will heat up the resin to the current temperature that you need to start printing. Otherwise, you're gonna be waiting for a long time uh, for it to come up to a past room temperature a little bit. It needs to be a little bit warm to start the whole process. Now, one of my biggest questions that I had too was how long can I leave this resin in this tray right here? And how many times can I come back to it and keep doing prints off of it? Now, the cool thing for me was I printed this frame over around, a, a, I'd say a couple weeks time, and I used the same exact bottle of resin in the printer, uh, just taking my time going through these parts, making sure they came out nice, and it never had a problem with uh, turning too solid. Number one, because I had it in the garage, and I have this UV cover on it. But number two, I also got myself off Amazon. You can go on Amazon, and you can get these 3D printer uh, complete kit 3D printer boxes now that have a little exhaust coming out the side. Now, I thought, and I ran ours out our doggy door in the garage. It worked out perfect because it takes all the fumes and puts them outside instead of being in the garage with you. I think a lot of people think about 3D printers uh, as being kind of smelly. Uh, and, and some of, you know, ABS, you want to have that ventilated if you're doing it inside your house because it's quite toxic. And the same thing is very true about resin printers like we're not trying to lead you down any strange roads that you you might think that this is completely a a healthier alternative because resin printing is not i would say like a healthier alternative but both of these need to be ventilated now the one thing that did surprise me about resin and this being my first resin printer this stuff smells less than i thought it was going to smell uh, I thought it was going to smell higher, uh, you know, more volatile, like say like epoxy or say like surfboard epoxy. I thought the garage was going to smell like a surfboard factory. And it's quite a minimal smell compared to, uh, say, someone who's fiberglassing surfboard. So it's much less smell than some of the smells I grew up with around the beach where we did have surfboard factories. So this is a lot easier uh, on the nose and the senses. Even if you have a sensitive nose, it is a quite faint smell. Now, one of the cool things is when you finish a print, you can pull off, it's almost like a bicycle type of release. This pops off like this, and this tray comes completely off. And once you pull this off, your print is on top of this plate. It feels really solid. It's a really heavy metal piece of uh, plate. And once you pop this off with just pretty much just a paint scraper, you pop it off, you throw it into the wash cycle for about five minutes with your uh, ISP alcohol. I use about 90% alcohol, just got it from Walgreens and filled up a bottle into the washer. And then once it comes out, you can wear rubber gloves. I suggest doing that. You can wash off your print a little bit in another separate container of fresh water. And then you can let it dry on some paper towels you come back with some alcohol and you're going to clean this off nice and clean. And then once you do with some paper towels, throw those all into 
a waste bin. And once you do that, you can put the tray back on there for the next print. And that's it. So it's a very easy process to get started with your first print. Now, the most fascinating thing about it for me was watching this tray go down into the liquid and it goes up and down. You can see the liquid kind of moving around it as it happens. And as it prints, it flashes light from the very bottom of the printer up into the liquid toward the tray, creating each layer and curing each layer as it goes. So it's a very cool process to see that happen. Um, and as it comes up, it reveals itself out of the liquid. It's like magic when you see this print come out of the liquid. I, I'm telling you guys, it is freaking cool, especially to see uh, parts from my FPV drone coming up out of there. So um, just to give you an idea too, this whole entire quad right here is a seven and a half inch FPV drone, a uh, long range FPV drone. And it weighs way less than say something like one of the iFlight Evoke seven and a half inch or the Cine 7 that I have sitting over there. I'll just give you a little bit of a weight comparison to show you. And I have to tell you, I'm nobody new to 3D printing. If you've been watching this channel for say 10 years, you probably saw about six or seven years ago now, I printed, a 3D printed an entire electric skateboard. Uh, it does have these big bars going through here and um, I have grip tape on the very top of it. You've probably seen it sitting over to the side uh, on the channel. But I printed this with a standard style 3D printer. Uh, you can see some of it is pretty rough on the top part right here. I did get a smooth part here, but you're always gonna have some part of it that uh, with a large print like this, you're gonna have mess ups and the 3D printer is gonna get crazy on you. It's gonna start doing that big hairy mess inside the machine. You, you wake up the next morning and a print like this, these were done in sections. This takes approximately 15 hours to do one section of this. Uh, and I think the biggest difference for resin printing and 3D printing is uh, the supports that you have to deal with. Uh, one of my biggest turnoffs with 3D printing, filament style 3D printing, is getting the supports off of the print, especially really delicate prints, and then having parts break. I have just been so frustrated having parts break because I'm trying to pull off the supports and the struts uh, that were just extra hard to pull off with this type of filament. So even though um, this is kind of cool looking, it is that multicolor filament, it does have some extra rough sections in here where I had errors on the print. And I'm not having as much problem with the resin printer and having those kind of weird glitches. Um, you can see some of the filaments actually hanging off here. And that's what happens to standard filament style prints, eventually it starts to come apart and you have pieces of it literally falling off the print. So uh, if I was to print a resin skateboard, I would have a much more solid skateboard deck than um, this filament that's coming apart. So that's the biggest difference between filament style 3D printing and resin printing. This is just 100% solid and way nicer. Uh, of a product. The end result is really impressive. Now, I still have a little bit of flex here on this frame, but it's not enough to cause a problem when flying, even with these larger seven, uh, seven and a half inch style motors. It is uh, very, very solid, and I really enjoy having this printer. I, I think that I would use this one more than my popular brand filament style 3D printer. Um, and, and my biggest thing about this is no more trying to unclog the nozzle on this one. There is no nozzle. It literally flashes light from the bottom up through the liquid and it's like magic when it comes out of there and reveals the part. Uh, the only thing, I'd say the only thing you have to watch out for with these resin printers, quite honestly, is just going to be the resin management. Um, if you have a spill or anything like that, you're gonna need a lot of paper towels, you're gonna need a lot of rubber gloves, and quite a bit of alcohol. So um, paper towels and alcohol are fairly cheap. You can get those, say, at the dollar store, but the rubber gloves, if you can also get those at the dollar store, 
you're going to go through quite a bit of rubber gloves because you're going to need to handle this stuff. And you're not supposed to handle the resin with your hands alone. You're not supposed to get the resin on your hands. So you want to use the rubber gloves uh, and be, be safe there. Just don't get it on your hands and be very meticulous with your printing process. And I think you're going to have a lot of fun with it because you can literally make anything with it. Uh, RC cars, you can print drones, you can print little mini figs and things like that. Um, very cool. My, my son wants me to print some Dungeons and Dragons and some Lego mini figs uh, for him with the, the resin printer. And we're going to do some black printing coming up uh, for one of our next prints. Uh, I'm going to clean this tray out. We're going to dispose of that stuff. And um, we're going to try to do some new stuff coming up on the channel. So I'm pretty excited to have this one. My first resin printer. And, you know, if you want to grab one of these, check it out at the link down below. I think you will absolutely love this for the FBB hobby. And going into 2026, with all the restrictions with DJI that's coming down the pipe, people are looking for alternative ways to be able to make things at home. Um, so just having your own FPV drone printer factory in your garage is a pretty cool thing, uh, especially since you can print them in black as well. Uh, I just printed this one in gray so that you guys could see it better in this review and uh, really, really see what my results are. But I had a ball with it, and I really enjoyed learning the process of making a resin print. Uh, if you are someone who enjoys reading the manual and just uh, a little bit of a, a different learning curve than filament style 3D printing and way less frustrating for me than when I got into 3D printing. It took me a solid six months to learn how to filament 3D print uh, with a friend who was just always coming over and helping me out uh, and, and a lot of screw ups. And I still have so many screw ups with filament style 3D printing that um, even though this one smells a little more, um, well, it smells about the same as ABS, but also just easier to deal with. And like, it's one of those style prints you can kind of set it and forget it. And I didn't have a lot of errors with the machine. That's one of the biggest things. You can literally set up your print as long as it's heated up to the right temperature. Once you press start, you can walk away and come back 30 minutes later and see that it's making progress and then it's done. Um, and once you get into the process of taking the plate off, removing the print, putting it in the wash, going through the wash cycle, washing it off in some clean water in a separate container. Then you put it into the little microwave thing. Um, and then you're done and it gets, you can, you can do the microwave process thing. Um, the curing station two times you can go through once if it st still feels a little bit tacky, you can run it again and you'll have a really nice, sturdy, dry, solid part. Uh, once it becomes not tacky, it's good. It's cured. It's ready to fly. So um, this one took me about 30 minutes to build up. I already had some extra parts uh, from another quad, so I was able to get this one out and go flying pretty quickly. Uh, really, really cool. So uh, I highly recommend playing with one of these. If you have the extra money laying around and you like to build quads, grab one of these. I, I think you'll really like it. So let me know down in the comments below if you have one of these or if you're thinking about getting one. Uh, also get in on our giveaway coming up on December 15th. Very soon now, a five inch FPV drone, uh, a little beginner kit. We're giving away a jumper T-Pro transmitter, ELRS transmitter, and a Recon 3 from HGLRC. So pretty cool giveaway. Oh, and a little micro RC car. Just a ton of stuff. We're going to make somebody's Christmas this year. Uh, really special. So ton of RC stuff to give away. And uh, I'm done here, you guys, with this review. It was a lot of fun. I want to say thanks to uh, Hey Gears for sending us this Reflex RS. Uh, a very, very cool printer. Now's the time to snap one up if you want to get a resin printer. Um, freaking cool. So uh, I appreciate you guys watching my reviews again. I'm Justin Davis. Take care, you guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.